All over the territory you will find these termite mounds. The inside of the mounds contain numerous chambers and galleries, one of which in the centre is a closed-in cell where the king and queen termite are held prisoner. The mounds are made from bits of soil mixed with saliva. If you put something on the mound, like this bottle, the termites will build around it. And it seems the termites have a sense of humour. Check out this creature-like mound, complete with beady little eyes. I dropped into Mataranka Springs for a refreshing dip. Most places in the Territory you can't swim due to crocodiles. But crocodiles don't like the warm thermal waters of Mataranka. A local guest house, the Territory Manor, put on shows every day, whereby they feed huge tame barramundi. I next head to Darwin, the Territory's laid-back capital. It's a different way of life up here. The tropical climate means when the sun goes down, a lot of things are done outdoors, like with the deck chair cinema, where you can watch movies under the stars. There wouldn't be many capital cities in the world where on high tide you can feed schools of native fish, as can be done at Aquasine walking distance from the city centre. Darwin was devastated by Cyclone Tracy on Christmas Day 1974. The local museum has a thought-provoking display recounting the cyclone's effect on the city. Admittedly, the warnings that uh, were given by the Bureau of Meteorology did stress that this was a nasty, mean little cyclone but it had to compete with the festive season and the festive feeling of people. This feeling must have started disappearing en masse at about midnight because it looked then like something was really starting to happen. The wind built up and built up to probably the first stage of cyclone tracing, where the trees were stripped of everything and were horizontal with the ground, in the same way as the rain drove horizontally in houses. This lasted, I suppose, till 2.30, 3 o'clock, and then there was a lull. The eye of the cyclone. In our part of Darwin, perhaps, we all wandered out and had a look at the damage. Didn't look too bad and thought, well, it was fairly terrible. It's the worst thing that's ever happened weather-wise to most of us, but we've survived. We even went in and assured the kids that Santa would be able to brave Cyclone Tracy without any trouble. Then Tracy really struck. There had been damage, there had been sheets of iron torn off roofs, there had been roof joists torn away, and these came back at us from a different angle at possibly twice the speed of the first day, an estimated 200 miles an hour in some cases. The wind was so fast that the wind measurement equipment at the Darwin Airport broke. Darwin is extremely multicultural, with over 50 different nationalities living together. To capture this population mix, I interview Bo Chuam, a 17-year-old first-generation Thai girl who works at her parents' stall at Parat Markets, one of Darwin's many unique outdoor markets. We have a stall at the Parat Markets and the Rapid Creek Sunday Market. And ever since I can remember, we've been having this as a family business. We sell fruit shakes and fruit salads. And we got a lot of regulars. Basically, all our customers are regulars. And basically, everyone who comes to the market, we know them. They know us. It's where people socialize, get together. It's something good, you know, it's something to look forward to because instead of staying home and, you know, being by yourself, you come out, you meet people, you know more, you learn things every day. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Darwin's a pretty small place. The people here are very friendly. My group of friends, we have like, I have friends who come from Brazil, who come from New Guinea, who come from Singapore and Malaysia. But it's not a problem up here because it's just, it's not, it's not something unusual in Darwin. 
because basically everyone's the same colour here. It's like one big happy family. The job I've got tonight, I work at a restaurant, a Thai, a Thai restaurant. I've nearly graduated year 12 and next year I'm heading to uni. I'm basically looking for a career in probably the IT or the business industry as that's the course that I'm going to choose to do. I like Australia because I think um, people who get to live in Australia, they're pretty lucky. Australia is a pretty lucky country compared to a lot of other countries. It's basically like you're an individual, you can do what you want to, want to do. If you have a dream, there's a pretty high chance that you can make it come true. Australia is a country of probably chances, you know, you get, you, you get to do things and you get to be more of yourself. The build up to the wet season can be fairly tough on those not used to it. It even has an effect on the population mix, with 75% of people up here under 25 years of age. Old farts just don't like it. One thing worth doing in Darwin is having a meal on the wharf, watching the boats go by, and on dusk experiencing the fantastic sunsets.